Today I want to talk about the South Korean TMJ dentist, Dr. Young Jun Lee, who is probably one of the biggest names in the TMJ world, and people travel from all over the world to see him. I would say he might even be the biggest name. Like, I, I cannot, off the top of my head, think of someone that is better known than Dr. Young Jun Lee. And so what does he do? So he treats TMJ, but he also treats a lot of neurological diseases. And he has a method or therapy that he calls TMJ balancing therapy, as well as something called functional cerebrospinal therapy, so FCST. And it's all about aligning the TMJ and getting the neurological system to function healthy again. He is probably one of the dentists that, like modern day dentists, that most aligns with what I'm saying. I, I've never gone deep on his work, but I've known about his work ever since about 2015. My friend Marcello was really pretty steeped in his work. So I would, you know, Marcello was influencing me and Marcello was being influenced by him. So I would say like part of his thinking is part of how I came to some of these conclusions that I did. Also, I think it's important to note that in a realm where failure rate is so high, which is TMJ, you know, like if you spend time on the TMJ forums on Facebook and Reddit, you see how many people are going in circles. Yet he claims that his clinic has an 85% success rate against TMJ, neurological disease, whatnot. I have a feeling that the only reason it's 85% is because this stuff takes time. I honestly think that these biomechanics, if you give it enough time and you give the person continued support so that they don't quit, will have a 100% success rate. Like, I don't think this does to the human body cannot not work on someone's human body. At least that's that with the way I view it. And I haven't seen like a single exception to that role that I consider an exception. So what kind of patients does he treat? He's treating people with neurological diseases like dystonias. Dystonias are where you have like muscle spasms, uncontrollable to rats, trigeminal neuralgia, fibro, as well as other things, right? So a lot of people with neurological diseases travel from all over the world to be treated by Dr. Young Jun Lee. So what's his protocol? What is this FCST or functional cerebrospinal therapy that aims to balance the TMJ? Well, there, there's essentially two appliances. There is a YBA, which he calls his cervical balancing appliance, which is something that he registers onto the teeth and the person wears for a short amount of time. And it's kind of like an indexed mouth guard in a way. Right? And so they, they do a whole bunch of like osteo and massage work on the person. And then after the person's bite changes, they lock it in with this IBA appliance. The other appliance that the patient is wearing most of the time is an OBA. So an OBA is nothing more than like a revive. So the mouth guard looks exactly like any mouth guard, right? Like it looks like a mouth guard you bought on AliExpress for five bucks, yet he's probably charging a few thousand dollars for it. And that's the reality of what that is and what that does. So the OBA, I am completely familiar with. The YBA, which is this index thing, is very similar to what things that I was experimenting with for years back in 16 and 17. So I would do body work, yoga, whatnot, and I would see that it would change the bite. And so my hypothesis was, okay, do the body work, do the stretches, it changes the bite, and then try to lock that bite because it's a better bite. I did that for, for long periods of time. Marcello was doing something similar. This does not work. This is flawed thinking. This is one of the reasons I went circles for years. Why? Because you cannot lock a single bite. So every time I did that, and I did it for months and months and months, I ended up just going in circles because I thought, oh, hey, I can just lock a bite. Whereas what the jaw actually needs, and I've explained this before, is that the jaw needs to be supported in several different positions, the lingual bite. And so this is what, something that Marcello had figured out back around that time. And then, you know, he was telling me and I, I figured out, you know, I tested it and figured out that he was right. So why is Dr. Young Jin Lee this renowned, you know, healer, if he's doing something that is wrong, let me explain. So he's using two appliances. This IBA is something that he just does for short periods of time when the, when the patient's in his office, right? Like the patient comes into their office, they do all the osteopathy and other body work, and then they slap the YBA in. But the most of the rest of the time, the patient is on the OBA, which is just a revive, right? So what I have a feeling he's doing is like the YBA is doing almost negative in reality. And it is this revive, you know, which shouldn't cost more than like $20, $25, whatever, which is doing all the healing. 
yet, you know, I think patients are paying like ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars to see this guy. So it's absolutely crazy. And I think, you know, like when how this biomechanics goes wide at scale, like I, I hope his practice just completely dries up. You know, I have nothing against the guy, but like he's doing some some stuff that I consider wrong. And then the stuff that he's getting his big reputation on is easy as shit. So and like, we're going to just democratize that and everybody's going to understand. Like, nobody's going to go to this guy anymore. Sorry, but I'm about to kill your practice. The other thing is like, he's gone mainstream, right? So like, he's gotten a bit of a reputation because, you know, like it's works and everything. You know, like, I understand exactly why it works. You stick a mouth guard in anyone that has a neurological disease mouth and they're going to get better. And so he's written books and he's on a YouTube channel and he's like, he's this amazing healer. And I just find it absolutely hilarious because this stuff is so simple. He's got a point that... Even though it's so simple, all these other dentists and orthodontists have completely screwed it up. And like they've made this big mess when all you actually needed was a simple mouth guard at the end of the day that was flat. The other last point I wanted to make about that is who's better, me or him? And this is where I, in the coming years, am going to prove that I absolutely destroy him. Yes, he's working with neurological disease patients. I don't, even though we have some, right? So you could say that he's working with more extreme cases in mind because I don't have people with dystonias and things. And yeah, yeah, I, I feel like maybe I will hit that point one day, but like, you know, I, I think those are more complex situations and, and like dealing with that remote is a lot harder and I'm not a doctor like he is and whatnot. So yeah, I give him one point that he's working with more complex patients in some cases. But why do I say I destroy him? Because I know how to make this process fast. My fast method, which you only learn by doing it on yourself, right? And I, I've given some of the pieces away in our community and other people are doing and they're seeing, I think some people are seeing that it does accelerate the process, but that is how you quickly kind of expand and inflate the skull and correct the body. And just wearing a mouth guard is extremely slow. So like if it were me against his absolutely best patient, I estimate I would blow them out by about 10x the speed, right? And so that is what I'm going to give to my group. Like, he's going to have his group going like little turtles, right? And we're going to have like, you know, rabbits running ahead, right? But, you know, in, that, in this case, like the turtle is not going to end up beating a rabbit. Like the rabbit's going to kick the turtle's ass. Anyway, that's my two cents on Dr. Young Jin Lee. Like, I have respect for the fact that he's one of the few dentists out there that actually kind of has a right. But I lose some of that respect from just how much money he's charging for this, right? Like, if he understood that it was that basic, why isn't he making this a lot more affordable? I think that, like, also talks a little bit to his ethics. And in any case, I plan to democratize this knowledge. And I think that there'll be lots of people getting the type of success that he is. Thanks.